I've been trying to do this for a few days now, but every morning when I get up, the wind's been conspiring against me. We're into almost mid-August now, and this is typical this time of year. You'll get these hot days, I and mean, it's been really hot over 100 degrees almost every day this month. And you'll get a really strong southwest wind. And uh, if it blows hard enough, I can't sit in this blind very long. But the unusual thing is we're, we're right at the edge of this big heat dome that's giving us all this heat. But just over in Oklahoma and Arkansas, not far from here, is the outside the heat dome. So all those storms have been riding uh, around the top of that heat dome. And the outflow boundaries from the storms have been pushing winds really strong from the east almost every morning. And because of that, there's a big hole in the wetland to the east and that wind comes right through there and it makes sitting in a blind like this impossible. Yeah, I guess I could come out early and stake the blind down and really secure it, but the beautiful thing about these blinds is I like the fact that they're portable and that you can set them up in the morning and then as soon as I leave, I can take it with me and not really have to worry about it all day long. And that helps with the longevity of the blind. If it's not sitting out in the sun all the time, it'll, uh, it, it won't fade, it'll last a lot longer. And I've got several of these blinds. They're really inexpensive and I really like using them because they're great for this kind of application. So the reason why I'm here on the wetland is because every day when I pass by, I've noticed that this wetland as it gets hotter and hotter and we haven't, we haven't had rain in almost a month now, it continues to shrink, all the water's evaporating out of it. And because of that, the body of water is relatively small and there's a whole lot of birds starting to, uh, starting to be attracted to a pretty small area. So I set up in here uh, about a half an hour before the sun came up. I actually drove my buggy in and jumped, dropped everything out, and it's still pretty dark. I set everything up and then, and then headed and then parked the buggy back over here. I might not have parked the buggy far enough because I've noticed there's a lot of uh, there's not as many birds here today, and they may be late late bloomers because usually when I see them, it's usually a little bit late later in the morning. But what I've been seeing this week is we've had. Uh, We've had little blue herons, both mature and immature, which is not usual for this area. We've had a lot of great white uh, egrets and and uh, we've had a lot of white egrets and some great blue heron and, and the typical gang that'll show up here. But I've also had another unusual bird showing up. That I say unusual, unusual for around here. And that's a uh, an ibis. And I was hoping he would show up today and sure enough he did. He's been, he's out feeding right now in this in this wetland, and uh, it's pretty cool to see those things. Because again, one of the things I take pride in is it's pretty easy to come down here and see egrets and and great blue herons, but to see some of the unusual birds that we don't get the chance chance to see a lot, that's that's pretty special. And right now I'm looking at a a, a a green heron that's over in the tree right now. So we're getting a few show up. Solitary sandpipers are here, uh, getting a few show up. So. It's, it's pretty hot today. It's going to get pretty hot today. So I'm going to see how long I can stand to stay in this blind and in the end see what kind of pictures I can end up with. One of the techniques I love to employ when doing nature photography, particularly bird photography, is using one of these portable blinds. They work great. Uh, when you sit in a blind, it's, it's hit and miss sometimes. It's you know you'll see some stuff some days maybe really uh have a lot of action some days maybe pretty slow this day is kind of medium i mean it, what makes up for it is the fact that i haven't seen a lot of birds yet but the birds i wanted to see and photograph and document them to be on this property uh with the exception of the blue heron i've seen those so far uh, but you've got to have to sit in a blind like this you got to have a certain amount of fortitude at least i mean you got to be willing to to sit for a long time and be a little bit bored. I don't have a good cell phone service here, so I can't sit here and go through my phone and look at anything. Uh, it's muddy. It stinks in here, you know, because this where I'm sitting right now is right at the edge of the water. And so as the water re retreats, everything that where the water was just a day or two ago 
is still pretty muddy it hasn't dried out yet and so it's muddy and i had to kind of come in here the mosquitoes early on they were they weren't biting but they were swarming so had a bunch of mosquitoes in the blind earlier and uh but usually if i can if i can tough it out and take it it's usually all worth it in the end because again i've accomplished that goal i've checked that box and that's what i try to do and you know again just the experience of the blind and getting to see nature unfold in kind of a slow motion way you just can't do that when you're in a national park and driving around and trying to drive around and see animals you can see you know if you're in yellowstone or somewhere like that you can see a lot of animals and uh but you're seeing them like everybody else is seeing them well sitting in a blind again watching waiting for the sun to come up watching the whole wetland sort of come to life right before your, your eyes is is an experience that you can really only experience when you sit in a blind like this and keep yourself concealed from any wildlife that's around